2 Timothy chapter 4, and also in Psalm 78. Thank you again for the privilege to be here and also to be able to have the wonderful accommodations. Just a privilege to be able to share the ministry God's called us to and uh, all that you've given already in just the short time we've been here. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Psalm 78, Asaph, the musician of the Lord and whose descendants you'll find scattered throughout the Bible, many of them also musicians, had a mission in his heart. He had a burden and a vision that God had given him and a, and a purpose for living. And he even spoke about the truth of God here in these opening verses. He says in verse 4 that we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come three things, the praises of the Lord, His strength, and His wonderful works that He hath done. So the praises of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, and the works of the Lord, we see here in verse 4. And he goes on to say in verse 6 that the generation to come might know these things, know them. Verse 6, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. And here's the goal. They might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Contrasted to the fathers before them, in verse 8, might not be as their fathers a stubborn and a rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. I believe with all my heart that God desires, as long as we're breathing on this earth, that we would have as the purpose of our life to show this generation these three things, the praises of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, and the wonderful works of the Lord. I'll never forget the people who had an influence and an impact in my life. When I was a child, when I was a teenager, and they took an interest in me, and I'd go out on church visitation with them, and I was in a bus ministry with them, and individuals that I could look up to who wanted my, my life to count for God. And I praise the Lord for those people, though many of them are with the Lord today. God wants us, regardless of how old we are, as long as we can get up and we can breathe and we can eat and we can move around, and maybe even if you can't, God's still got a ministry of some kind for you. And that one of those ministries is simply looking around and finding a younger person than you, finding maybe a teenager, someone either in a class situation, either in another ministry in the church, but in some way encouraging that young person to know and serve God. Have a heart for this generation and the generation to come because it's a wonderful blessing to be able to look back over our years and say, I remember when that person was a teenager and I had the opportunity to say this to them and I had the opportunity to take them in ministry there. I had the opportunity to encourage them when they were down and you were there supporting them and encouraging them and being a blessing to them and your heart's desire was to sit down with them and show them the praises of the Lord. They just didn't see a complaining older person, older than them, that could have been a 20-year-old, who knows. Not just a complaining person, but a person who truly was praising the Lord for how throughout their life, whatever old they were, how God had been with them. And what a great God they had the privilege to serve during their life. And to sit down with them and say, you know, I went through some hard times. I remember losing a friend or a family member. I remember this trial and valley that I went through. But you know what? God was still there. And I experienced the strength of the Lord like never before when God took me through that valley. Take the illustrations of your life and point them back to how great and glorious our God is in praising Him and showing them what a strong God we have. You know, when jo Joshua was about to take over for Moses, and God told him several times in Joshua chapter 1, be strong in the Lord and of good courage. Be strong in the Lord and of good courage. Just like I was with Moses, I'm paraphrasing now, but just like I was with Moses, I'll be with you, and I won't forsake you. I'll be with you. I won't forsake you. Be of good courage. Be strong in the Lord. And finally, at the end of that chapter, the people started saying that in the direction of Joshua. We'll, we'll obey and be strong in the Lord, Joshua. You know what? This generation needs to see believers who are strong in the Lord and of good courage. 
because we've had that walk with the Lord. I believe that every day, and we need to focus on this, we need to have an awareness of the presence of God in our lives. I don't mean it's just a God we're doing something for. It's a God that's just kind of give us some details and we're busy doing this, that, and the other. I mean we need to have an awareness of God's presence in our life. And we cannot do that if we don't meet with God. We cannot do that if we don't open the Word of God. When we have a, an awareness of His presence, we're going to praise Him. We're going to find how strong He is. And we're going to rehearse the wonderful works of God, His protection and His promises in our life. And we'll be able to go from that point and show this generation who our God is. But how do we go about doing all that? You say, you know, I want, I want to impact this generation. But how do I do that? How do I take the challenge that Asaph has given me here? I believe we find through Paul's pen of inspiration in 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you'll turn there, how we can accomplish that on a daily basis. Paul is speaking to Timothy, and in this passage, we oftentimes think he's just speaking to the preacher Timothy, and he is. But other times in other passages, the same theme is, is being preached by the Apostle Paul when he's talking about all believers. So I really call this God's call for every believer. And I believe that's what Paul is saying to Timothy. In the context here, obviously he says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And he goes on to say, really, why that's so important? For the time's coming, he says, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, they're going to heat themselves, teachers having itching ears. They're going to go in this direction and that direction. They'll follow the woke lifestyle. They'll follow this lifestyle. And whatever it is, it seems to be a wave of going that way. They're going to move. That's why we have to be grounded in the Word of God. Young people, young adults, older adults, we've got to be grounded in the Word of God. So when we see the world moving around us, we go back to the rock and we go back to the anchor and we go back to the truth and we park there and we say, this is what God says. This is what the Bible says, and I'll stand upon it, and I'll believe it, and I won't believe the fables. He goes on to say that, actually, in the, ne in the next verse. He says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. Listen, a lie is always a lie, even if everybody believes it. And the truth is always a truth if nobody believes it. And I hope you believe it. I believe you do. And we need to mark that down and determine that I have an awareness of the presence of God in my life and I, I am aware of what God desires for my life and the fellowship that He wants and the truth that He gives me and I'm going to stand right here. What happens if we don't have paddles in the water and the engine's not running on the boat and there's no anchor down at the bottom? What happens to you in that boat? You are drifting. You're just drifting. That won't happen in Nova Scotia. They're going to have an anchor down. They're going to have a motor running. They're going to have something doing those lobstermen when they're out. They're going to have some way of staying in that general area until they're ready to go again. There's an anchor, and we have to have our lives anchored to the truth of the Word of God so we won't drift. We'll drift spiritually. Do you realize there is no amount of doing for God that can ever replace spending time with God? I mean to where you are not just doing a lay-me-down sleep in prayer at night. You're not just doing a quickie verse to say we had our devotions, but I mean we are spending time letting God teach us what we need to know about ourselves and about Him. In this fifth verse, I want you to write the word weak on your, on your paper if you're taking notes. W-E-E-K. You can write it vertically. W, under that put E, under that put E, under that put K. And I'm going to give you a word for each one of those letters. It's here in the text. Here's what Paul said to Timothy. Watch, verse 5, 2 Timothy 4, Watch thou in all things. That's number one. Endure afflictions, number two. Do the work of an evangelist, number three. 
Make full proof of thy ministry. The W is watch. In the Bible, the word watch is sometimes given to us in the word to be sober. It means to be attentive, give full attention to, observe it, absorb it into your life, be very careful, watch it. Not just a glance by, you know, you're really intense on watching it. That's the idea of the word watch. You'll see it all the time accompanied with prayer. Watch and pray. And so the challenge here that Paul's giving Timothy and giving all of us, that we have to be watchful Christians. We have to intently pay attention to the truth of God and the things that are not the truth of God. We have to be careful not to allow certain things into our lives that will take us away from sweet fellowship with God. And there are many of those in this world. He says, be watchful. There are three things that I believe we do when we're being watchful. We need to turn from sin, talk to God, and trust His Word. You can write those down if you want to. We see this all throughout the New and Old Testament. Turn from sin, talk to God, trust his word i like simple outlines okay turn from sin talk to god trust his word if i'm going to be a watchful attentive taking heed kind of believer i must turn from sin i have to mortify my flesh like colossians chapter 3 says mortify mortify means to put it to death it means to suck all the power out of whatever is trying to overtake me and we do it by the spirit of god by the grace of god by the work of god in our life in the Bible, we see other passages that make it clear that we must be setting our affection. That Colossians 3 is one of them, on the Lord. If we're watching things that are not of God, if we're not setting our affection in the things that we love the most on the Lord, we will go astray. We will drift. We won't have a good W-E-E-K, which you're going to learn about in the rest of it in a minute, a good week, if we don't watch like God wants us to watch watching in the bible is also given to us in another verse it says in several of these passages that i really love but first peter chapter 4 says but the end of all things is at hand be ye therefore sober there's that word again and watch under prayer the word sober there is the same word that was used when when uh, maniac of gadara remember the demons that were cast out and they found him at the feet of jesus and the Bible says that he was in his right mind. That's the same word here, sober, just given to us as sober, same thing, in his right mind. And so when we're watching and we're being in our right mind, God is able to use us for his glory. Watch is the first one. Turn from sin, talk to God, develop a relationship with him so you can pray. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Remember that verse, Colossians chapter 4? Watch and pray. There it is again. The end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober. Watch and pray. Trusting his word is really believing his word. I'm sure that a number of you during this pandemic have had to go back to the Bible. I know a number of pastors who've had to do that, trying to figure out how to have church and how to carry on ministry, how to even reach people, how to even contact people sometimes in our, in our province. We're just getting out of an up and down kind of lockdown for the last two years. And we're looking forward to that happening this summer. But we've had to come back, I know I have, and just look at the promises of God. Regardless of the circumstances, God is still on the throne. I've gone to verses like 103, verse 19, that reminds me that God is, has prepared his throne and his kingdom rules over all. It's still there. Pastor really hit on my in his last point today. He was really preaching some of this already. I'm not sure if he's going to preach the whole sermon or not, but he, that was just his last point, which is good. <laughs> but, but that's right on. And the Lord puts it together that way, doesn't he? We're talking about this generation, this generation that might some of them believe like you saw the video he showed this morning. I mean, who's going to stand in their path and tell them what the Bible says if we don't? The gospel is hid. It's hid to those that are lost, people like that. 
God wants us to be about his business. Trust his word. Believe God. Go forth and tell other people that you love the Lord with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. There's a lot to learn from that verse. I don't have time to give it. But you meditate on that sometime. When you love the Lord, write it out. Write out all those on on your paper sometime. When I love the Lord with all my heart, what does it mean? When I love the Lord with all my soul, what does it mean? When I love Him with all my mind, what does it mean? When I love Him with all my strength, what does it mean? And let the Spirit of God teach you what it means when you love Him that much. Trust His Word. Walk, a watch rather, and then secondly, endure. And I'm going to fly through the end of this here. Endure. Paul said to Timothy, endure affliction. I don't know what your affliction is today, but I'm sure you have one to some degree. It could be physical, it could be financial, it could be a burden you carry about a loved one that's not saved or someone else that is in your home, maybe a child who's gone astray as an adult. They could be numerous afflictions you could be facing today. The Bible tells us that we're not only to believe on his name, but also to suffer for his sake. Sometimes in your workplace or in your school grounds or somewhere else, you're going to suffer for Jesus because you know Jesus. You're associated with him. You love him. Not everybody around you is going to do that. And you'll have to endure. You'll go through some dark valleys. We were on deputation in 1983, surrendered to go to Nova Scotia, wanting God to use our lives for his glory. My wife was expecting our first child. We were like three months into deputation when she was, when our little girl was born. Very healthy, no physical problems. But on the third day, God took her home to be with him. I'll never forget talking with the Lord and saying, Lord, I've surrendered to go to Nova Scotia. I don't know much about it other than what we knew from those nine weeks of ministry. But Lord, I know you want us to go. But why this, Lord? And God had to remind us truly that his grace was sufficient. Affliction would come, but God still had a call in our lives. So we took about a few weeks, kind of gather with some family and think through, again, the Lord's calling. We got right back on deputation. God brought our support in in a quick amount of time, and, and, and we landed there. And I think, after I look back now all these years, if it had not been for the grace of God, I would have missed so many blessings if I had not gone. My wife and I had not gone. And I'm thankful that my wife was willing to go. Despite all, she was willing to go with me and serve the Lord there in that place. We have to endure some afflictions along the way, but God hasn't left us. The E is also in this text, verse 5, do the work of an evangelist. The work of an evangelist is evangelize. There's the other E, to watch to endure, to evangelize. We could spend an hour on, a, on this one point. God wants us to go with the gospel and tell people about Jesus. Do you remember in the first century? Let me just read a couple of verses there about what the early church did. Paul said in Romans 1.8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the the whole world. The word spoken there is the word for announce, teach, proclaim publicly, preach. Get the word out. And those believers were known for that. Isn't that something? I wonder if our faith is spoken at our workplace. I wonder if our faith is spoken where we live. I wonder if the people around us know our faith because we've been faithful in delivering the greatest story ever told. Evangelize. That's the work of the evangelist. But that's also the work of every believer that we're to get the message to people that are without Christ. There's a track that I like that I use a lot here. It's called uh, The Story Behind Amazing Grace. Some of you have probably seen this one. 
And oftentimes, I've given it out to people there in Nova Scotia, and I'll say, I'm sure you've probably heard this song. I've met a few people that haven't. I say, you've probably heard this song before. Here's a story about it. You'll really enjoy this. And they'll take it, and they'll read it. Maybe some don't, but many do. I've given it sometimes to people at the drive through at Tim Hortons two or three times. And that doesn't mean I really eat, drink a lot of Tim Hortons now, you understand. But I, I've gone through there, and yeah, you gave me one of those. Yeah, you gave me one of those. I guess I'm going to go to a different Tim Hortons. And look around. That's a coffee shop for those who may not know Tim Hortons. Anyway, I really uh, am thankful for God using that, that track. Just before I left, we had a man who was an excavator on the excavator company, has been doing a lot of our work there and working on this, this new building, landscape, just basically just digging the foundation and doing, digging a septic system and so forth. And the night or two before I left, I took him his final check that we need to pay him for for doing the work so far. It's about mid-40s, and I walk into his shop, which is a, like several, two or three dump trucks and big equipment, so it was a big building. And it was just the two of us there. I've been praying for some time that God would give me the opportunity to witness to Rodney. And I stood there and I began to share God's simple message. And after I finished, I said, Rodney, have you ever heard the gospel before? And he looked at me and said, no, I've never heard the gospel before. And I thought, Lord, what an opportunity to be able to introduce Jesus to somebody who had not heard. And even those who may have heard, to hear it from somebody like you who cares about their soul, and you say it again to them. God wants us to announce so our fate can be spoken of throughout our world, whatever our world is, every day. Watch. Endure evangelize and the last point is not the k the k is not in the text but the point is here in verse 5 make full proof of thy ministry the word full proof has the idea of going to the end continuing on till you complete it keep moving forward you got it keep moving forward Keep on keeping on. Paul had already said, or said it after this in verse 17. He said, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me, 2 Timothy 4, 17, and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known. In other words, it would be accomplished. It would be heard. Somebody would know about Jesus. I'd be able to finish the task that God had for me. The same word, fully known, in verse 17, is the same word given to us here in make full proof of the ministry. Same word. Go to the end. Finish the task. Accomplish it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't look behind you. Don't let the negative impact of your life, whatever it's been as a child or a teenager or an adult or somebody you were in a relationship with or whatever it might be in your life, don't let any negative impact keep you from looking forward and pressing to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God's got a ministry for us. He's got a plan. As long as we're breathing, to impact this generation which can impact the next generation if the Lord tarries. So they'll set their heart aright toward God and be steadfast. The Apostle Paul, in the next verse, as we conclude with his own testimony in verse 6 and 7, says this, I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I've kept the faith. Every day, beloved, I believe we have to do the same thing. And we have to say, Lord, help me by the power of God to fight a good fight. Help me, Lord, with the peace of God to finish my course and not quit. Help me, Lord, with the presence of God to find myself keeping the faith. Lord, I need you. And Jesus has promised my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. God is still there with us every day. But we must have an awareness of his presence and engage with the Lord in his word. 
turning from sin, talking to God, trusting his word, being watchful, enduring by his grace and by his power. None of us can endure in our own strength. We can't even evangelize in our own strength. We can't even keep going in our own strength. But God will help us. He'll strengthen us for the work of being a faithful believer serving him. Dear friend, if every day you don't focus on W-E-E-K, you'll become W-E-A-K. Paul said, therefore, having this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. He didn't want to be weak, W-E-A-K. But he challenged us all to be W-E-E-K every day. Watchful, enduring, evangelize, and keep moving forward to the glory of God alone. Let's pray. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. First of all, I'll ask, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If you're tonight and you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, you say, no, you know, this thing about being a Christian, I haven't heard it quite like that. If it's a relationship that's greater than any relationship I can have on earth and it's eternal life that I can have, it's forever and ever and ever in heaven. I want that person and I want that place. If you're here tonight and you say, would you pray for me? I don't have that personal relationship with the person of Christ. I don't know that I'm going to the place where he's reigning and ruling tonight. Just lift your hand up quietly if you don't know you're saved. And I'd like to know that. I'd like to know and have that relationship with him, anybody at all. Dear Christian, how is your week? How is your week? Your W-E-E-K. Every day. God, help us to focus there so that we can get the victories in our own life. So when we step through every part of every day, there's an awareness that our great God is walking with us. Father, I pray tonight your will will be done through the preaching of your word tonight. Use these faithful people, Lord. Be vessels fit for the master and worldwide evangelization. And Lord, at home in our Jerusalem, and we'll praise you for what you'll do as we watch and endure and evangelize and keep moving forward with God. In his name we pray.